This is from New York Post. <laughs> Act your wage is the new quiet quitting. Visibility doesn't pay the bills, say Gen Z workers. Yo, the future is yours for the taking. Gen Z, not all of them, but there are such lazy, vapid, spineless, and pathetic individuals. This is what your wealth hath wrought. Could you imagine going to like the greatest generation and being like, if you fight this war, you will you will make this. And them being like, well, that's a noble cause. Let's do it. <laughs> They're going to be like, wow, that's sad. These Gen Z workers are saying, don't let them see you doing anything and just do nothing and get paid because you're worth it. What do you think, Andrew? Um is that a fair it, depiction? Money is a human right or something. Like <laughs> I it, it, this the I've I've heard all about this this, you know, the quiet quitting and I've talked about uh with friends about people actually working, like going back to work in an office and um I was watching uh, last night, Tucker Carlson was interviewing Dana White, and he was like, yeah, like, you know, a couple weeks after the beginning of the pandemic, everybody came back to the office and was working in the office. And there's there's a lot to say about working in an office because you can, it's easier to micromanage your team. It's easier to say, uh, get your work done as opposed to, oh, just keep moving your mouse like every 15 minutes while you you're showering and cooking and playing with your cat you know uh it's it's almost it, i think at the beginning of the pandemic a lot of people were were worried about losing their jobs i'm working at home i need to show my boss that i'm actually doing stuff now we're having this this debate whether you should you know work your worth or you're working too much for for less money it's just, it's it's all ridiculous i mean all of this from remember van life that was really big yeah mm -hmm. yeah i'm just like uh, well let, let me slow down there was this woman who made two videos and got like two million subs and they said it was an it was a mistake in the algorithm or something and i'm just yes like, <laughs> i'm like it's really convenient that there's a movement forming telling people to sell off all their positions and live in squalor at a time when they're also campaigning against climate change i'm sorry it just doesn't sound like a coincidence it sounds like they intentionally prioritized talking about how cool it is to live in a van. But Wouldn't it be great to have nothing? I bet the algorithm you'll, you'll own nothing it. and you'll be happy. And then they're like, I wait, where do I poop? And then like, this is horrible. But I do <laughs> love that. Like, oh, you have no. an RV and you have an RV. I built do you a have van. an RV? I built a van and it's got a full functioning uh, Blackwater system with a toilet and a shower and everything. Yeah, like, you know, a human being like you're you know you guys point is, you guys have you guys have a decent amount of income that you can do that not everybody can uh can take a sprinter van that's not the, that's not the point the point i'm trying to make is i'm sorry youtube was promoting people oh, yeah. giving up their possessions to live in a van something about it is charming though i've always kind of had the desire to like hop in a motor home and tour the planet you know in my yes. retirement in my old age or whenever but then the realism is that it's hard to get stuff done well here let, let me let me ask you guys uh how do you feel personally about the debate that you know people should you know oh nothing corp, corp, corporations want people to work in an office in their space workers either want hybrid or they want to completely stay home and they think that they deserve it they think that that's yeah and and if they don't get it they're gonna quit and they're, they're gonna quietly quit good they uh, should they should so and companies should be happy if you're a corporation, if you're yeah, if you're and your employees if you're are employees. like, I won't come to the office. Be like, exactly. Then we're, we're letting you go, and best of luck. And both parties will be very happy in that scenario. Because if you're running a company, I'll tell you this because we need this here too. You want your employees in a space to build a culture, to share ideas, and help develop I, like everything that's happening in the space. So we get people hitting us up, being like, I can do that job, but I'll do it remotely. I say we can't do it, and they go like, Well, I'm looking for a remote. Well, good luck, man. You know, best of luck to you. We're looking for people who want to come down and, and, and help build something. And that means no matter what your job is, someone might be like, I'm working on this game. And you could be like, oh, yeah, try this. I'm like, I didn't think about that. That's the kind of stuff that can only happen when people are hanging out together, that are friends, that are working together to build something. Yeah, you yeah. can't do these things over Slack or Teams. No, yeah. It's not the same thing. It's and it's an environment that also challenges you and inspires you. When you see someone next to you working really hard, it inspires me to work even harder. So I mean, even coming here, when I'm when I'm not here, I'm, I take things a lot easier. But when I'm here, I'm seeing everyone work and I'm like, okay, I got to step it up. I got to you know uh, put all my intentions and put all my energy into being the best version of myself. As you could clearly see, I'm, yeah. I'm doing a, a lot of that. <laughs> you look hot. 
lot. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm only getting better as time goes on because I'm around that environment. So I, I think a lot of these you know, young people, they're being taught a lot of really bad things in college. And when they hit the real world, they're kind of devastated because one, they're in debt. Two, um, they're also in a situation where they're going to have to work for a corporation or, or a situation that they're not going to be happy about. So I, I think this is Let why me, we're seeing oh, a lot now, of this correlated. And, and now I'm sorry, Tim. We're we're in. We're about to what? Nothing. Well, are you nothing. talking about your he boobs? Telling Tim how much you like. Them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we're we're on the we're in a recession, and it's only going to get worse. And all these people that that overpaid uh, on homes pay, paid like two hundred thousand dollars more for a house than it was worth. They're going to lose their jobs, and then we're going to have a major housing crisis. So, oh man, this is the crazy thing right now. Uh, let me tell you, we, uh, you know, we're 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 working on an expansion. I got good news. Two of the walls at Freedom Stan are up on the new on the new headquarters. It's steel frame building, and we, uh, paid we in have, cash. Well, what, what do you mean? You didn't take out a mortgage to yeah, do it's all, all this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 we hired a company to build a building. <laughs> yes. And so you, you basically, you pay by invoice though. So they're like, we bought this, then you got to pay them. So over a period of time, you're, you're paying in cash. It's not like you write a check for a million dollars and hand it to them or anything like that, right? But we got two of the walls up. This is really good news. The other thing is we've been talking about doing a brick and mortar shop. And so I've been, look, I've been, I've been looking at various properties. The funniest thing in the world, they just raised interest rates. And all of these property owners, for some reason, are convinced their properties are worth 50% more than they're worth. Mm -hmm. So I go, to, I go to this building and they're like, you know, they want X amount of money. And I'm like, are you nuts? Like there's a labor shortage, a supply shortage. We're in a recession. We're in a bear market. They just raise interest rates. They're going to raise interest rates again. And you think, I'm going to give you that price. And they go, you know what? We're going to wait. What happens? Two months goes by, the rates go up, the price drops. And I come back to them and I say, I told you what it was worth. You could have sold it. I'm inclined to offer you less. But these, it's, it's just insane right now that prices are dropping across the board. Property is popping up everywhere because rates are going up. But there are still these people who are convinced that their empty lot is worth millions of dollars. And it's mm -hmm. laughable. And you're like, you're, you've been on the market for two years. I'm just, you know, that's, that's sort of a, you know, anyway, behind the scenes, the kind of thing. But what I want to say right now is when it comes to these Gen Z people being like, this is what the story says from the New York Post. This, this woman, Sarai Sa 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 Marie, acts out this, this scene where she goes, hey, Veronica, I'm going to have you take this home and work on it tonight. And then she goes, respectfully, Susan, I'd rather spend time with my family slurping an iced coffee from Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, look, to be honest, if you're a wage worker, I totally agree with that. If you're being paid by the hour and your boss comes to you and says, I want you to take this project back home and finish it, you'd be like, okay, well, I'll bill you by the hour. So if I'm, if I'm working for you and you're paying me hourly, then I'll say, we'll commit four hours to my home time and it's time and a half overtime. Sure. And then, you know, okay. But what they're talking about with a lot of these young people is not wages, but salaries. Look, I'm going to tell you something. You know how he, we hire here? I don't care about people who want to do a job. I care about funding people who are already li like living that life. Like what I mean is somebody might be like, I want to write a book and I'm working on these stories. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to give you money to keep doing that. That's what I'm interested in. Somebody, so instead of being like, we want someone to do the job. It's more like, do you like doing this thing you do? How would you like to get paid to do that thing? Yeah, I've noticed the people that work here that that work works out are leaders, like self inclined, and that you're facilitating leaders to function in the thing that they do well. When people come and they're waiting to be told what to do, nah. it's not the right environment. And so that's the, that's a thing with these people. If you ever get somebody who's like, I'm going to act my wage and quietly quit, it's like, okay, you're, you're fired. You know, no beef. I mean, we're letting you go because you clearly don't want to be here. I, would, I tell everybody, if you don't want to be here, you shouldn't be. You know and what, if you want to be here, then, you know, we'll make it, we'll figure it out. What I identify with, with people's disgruntled uh, nature right now is hourly wages for things that can be done. Like you're here for 40 hours a week and just sit there and we'll give you things to do through the day. And I'm like, cause I would get things to do and they, I could get them done super fast. And then I'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm done. And they're like, well, you need to be here for six more hours. And I'm like, damn, this is a waste of my life. I yep. can get things done super fast. So pay me for projects. That's what I think people need to start focusing on. If you want to please your employees is pay them per project. It doesn't matter how fast they are. In fact, it's better if they do it fast. And it gives them more free time. That's the thing too. We don't do we don't we don't do hourly. We do all salary. And so it's like if if your job is to like let's say move box from room A to room B, I don't care how long it takes you to do it. You did it. You can leave. I don't care. You know, just you, we got you. Message me, and if we need anything else, this is your task. You did it. 
Go watch. Go play video games. Whatever. Like it's it's insane to me that you're gonna pay me to play video games. If I hire you to paint a picture of Bucko the cat, and you get that, and 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 I'm like, it's uh, you got to paint this picture, and uh, I don't know how long it'll take you, but we'll pay you X, and you go okay, and then an hour later, it's this beautiful masterpiece. I'd be like, well, here's your pay. Like now you can do whatever you want because this was the agreement. These are the terms of the contract. You know what I mean? So per project, like Ian said. Yeah. Well, like sort so, of. So my, my, I mean, maybe it's it's that these people are looking for that kind of work, right? Maybe it's that these Gen Z people want the environment where they can focus on what they want to do. Sometimes people get taken advantage of. Like they'll be like, okay, they want me to paint a picture of Bucko. They do it in an hour. It's done. It's amazing. And the, the, then the owner is like, that's fantastic. Now paint me another one. And you're like, dude, <laughs> I could have taken eight hours to do this. And then you wouldn't make me do a second one. So like. It's like the employee well, trying to work the system. You've shown your hand, you know, like yeah. you, you, you. I got know, an A plus too many now, times. Now that now we know that you're me. a super fast person, you know, I'm going to, as an employer, I'm going to take advantage of that and say, well, this, I know that he's going to do these this great stuff within an hour and I'm going to have him do like, Three or four of them a day. I used to get that in school. I would get a, all A pluses when I was really young. And then I started to get Bs because I was just so bored with homework. I, I kind of didn't want to do homework. And my parents were like, what's wrong? You get, you're an A plus student. What's wrong? Something's wrong. I got a C in there. Like, you're grounded until you, until you improve your grades. And I'm like, I should have just gotten Bs and Cs the whole time. So I stopped trying. I was like, I'm just going to phone in the bare minimum to get through this bullshit. And I did. And I, I got immensely successful. And I had lots of free time as a result. That was my attitude with school. It's like the way the school fun way that school functions is extremely detrimental to like to to gifted kids, to hardworking kids. Some ki some people, it's a lot harder to learn stuff, and so they're sitting there and they're struggling. So you punish them for it, which makes no sense. Some kids solve the problem instantly, so you punish them for it. Wow, really made no sense. So for like I, I, I for me it was it was similar. I'd be in class, and they'd be like, "Today we're going to learn this subject in math." I'd open the book, I'd look, I'd go, oh, I get it. And then they'd be like, do the problem. I'd go, oh, yeah, it, it's like this. And they would say, okay, that's that's Monday. But Tuesday through Friday, we're still doing this Friday's the test. I'll be like, okay, well, I don't need to pay attention to you mumbling what you already told me. So then I'd be daydreaming or doodling and not paying attention. Then the teacher would think she caught me and be like, you answer the question. And I'd answer the question. Then I would get punished because I didn't do the weird nonsense formula they wanted because I could do math in my head. And so I was just like, at that point, school is a complete waste of time. The, the purpose of it clearly is to push people into a box and compress them. And it's not making kids successful. It's not teaching them to be hardworking individuals who can succeed. It's teaching them to not try to hold themselves back because you'll only be punished if you work harder, which is why I'm not surprised this is what we're getting with the new gen with the next yeah. generation. Well, it's teaching them to comply, to follow orders. It zaps their creativity and zaps away any kind of independence or entrepreneurial spirit because you're not supposed to draw outside of the lines. You're supposed to do as you're told. And I think a lot of modern education is just rinse and repeat instead of, hey, let's see what you're naturally gifted in. Let's see what you're naturally talented in. Let's explore those ideas. Let's see ways that we could help the world rather than, of course, exploit it for our own personal benefit. And, uh, you know, this this culture, this work culture is just so weird where people feel that they're, you know, that, that they're all, that they belong to work at home. Do you think that like a, somebody comes out of college, has never worked in an office before, gets a job working from home? Oh, man. And d does that person think that they're going to be working from home until like they retire like that they're going to be having that they're that they're never going to work in an office they're like i'm this is sustainable this is something you know th this is why everybody bought all these big houses that they didn't really need you know uh but it, it's just such a it's just the whole thing is just such a weird culture and uh it's the argument the the argument to stay at home and completely miss those interactions and completely miss that inspiration and stuff. It's just so, it's just so bizarre to me. Like I, I loved going into an office unless I had a terrible boss. Well, that's the thing. I guess <laughs> yeah. it depends on the job. It's probably easy to be like, Hey, do you want to come work for a big, you know, podcast and silly comedy show and ghost stories? Like, that's probably easy to convince people. It's a fun place to be. But if you're like working at the cracker factory, I can imagine you don't want to be there. You know? Well, that's well, you, unless and, you're passionate about different kind of crackers, and but other not, people. you know, and, and that's, and that's another thing. Uh, not everybody has the privilege to work from home. You can't be a barista and work from home. 
you know, unless you're controlling some barista robot or something well, you're coming. like a drone, you know, like from which your you're house, coming. Oh, wow. which maybe you're coming. Sure. Uh, but not not everybody has a privilege. So to for for a certain for a select group of people to be angry about having to go back to the office, think about everybody else, retail workers, manufacturing workers, like they don't have that privilege. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.